In this video I'm going to give you 5 tips and tricks that will help you solve any difficult math problems you're stuck on. These are just ideas that I've come across in my maths degree that have helped me to solve difficult problems. Some of them are research based and some of them just come from personal experience that have helped me to solve problems. Okay, tip number one, make sure you understand the question 100%. Go through it extremely slowly, make sure you understand every word and symbol and look up any words and symbols that you don't understand. And don't start answering the question until you've understood it fully, otherwise you're just going to get stuck. And also have a look at your notes that are relevant to the question to make sure there's no bits of information that you might need to answer the question. Okay, idea number two. To get a feel for the question, it's a great idea to use examples. So apply the question to simple examples. So if it's asking you to prove something for an arbitrary number n, for example, then try the question with small values of n, two, three, four, until you have a feel for what the question is asking you to prove and why it might intuitively be true. Another good idea is to look for counter examples. So examples that don't quite follow the hypotheses of the question, and so therefore our counterexample to the result of the question. This will then give you an idea of not only why the thing you're trying to show is true, but also why the question doesn't apply to slightly different examples. Okay, tip number three. This is similar to tip number two, but this time you're just going to simplify the question. So can you change the question slightly so it's easier and so that you can solve it? If you can do this, it's a great idea because then you might start to find some of the routes you need towards the answer. In other words, if the problem's too difficult, make it easier so you can solve it. Tip number four, make sure you take lots of breaks. Our brains have a finite amount of energy and when this energy is depleted, it becomes really difficult to solve problems. So taking a break, coming back, refreshing your mind makes it much more likely that you'll be able to solve the problem. In fact, a 2011 study showed that taking breaks helps keep you focused, which is intuitively very obvious. Another reason that taking breaks is so important is that it allows your brain to slip into a mode called diffused mode thinking. So you have two modes, focus mode thinking, which is when you're obviously focusing on a task and not thinking of much else. And then there's diffused mode thinking, where your brain is idling away in the background while you're doing menial tasks, like doing the washing up. Diffused mode thinking is like the big picture where your brain looks at it from many different angles and associates ideas that it wouldn't usually. Taking breaks increases the chances that your brain will be in this mode and it makes it more likely that you might be able to solve a difficult problem. During my degree I solved countless problems while doing the washing up or just walking around. This brings me to the Einstellung effect. Einstellung which basically means that after you've solved a number of problems in a given way, when you come to solve the next problem, your brain is fixed and wants to solve it in the manner it's already done, which makes other solutions invisible to your brain. This is one of the reasons why taking breaks is such a good idea, because it pulls you out of this fixed mode of thinking and allows your brain to associate different ideas. Barbara Oakley's book, A Mind for Numbers, talks a lot about this diffuse mode focus mode thinking and I'd highly recommend reading it if you're studying maths. There's loads of great ideas in there and how to make your studying more efficient so you can save time and also have better grades. I'll put a link for this book down in the description. Usually in videos people actually have the book but I use Kindle so. Another thing to note is that it's important to keep your breaks light. You want to do this to increase the chances that your brain goes into diffuse mode thinking and so your brain can then throw around more, more ideas and you're more likely to solve the problem. By light I mean things that are mentally light, like exercise, doing chores, going for a walk, meditating, having a nap. In fact, having a nap is a great one. A 2009 study, study showed that sleeping, in fact dream sleep, increases your creativity. So a great idea if you're stuck on a problem is to go to bed, sleep on it, wake up, and then you're more likely to solve it in the morning. And another great break is having a chat with someone. Bad breaks include reading, solving other difficult problems, or scrolling through your phone. Try and keep it light, let your mind wander. And finally, tip number five, if all else fails, cheat. And by cheat, I don't necessarily mean look up the answer. I mean, ask a friend for a tip, or for the full solution, or ask your tutor, or ask your professor. Or if none of that works, then look up the answer online. Sometimes you won't be able to find it, but sometimes you will. If you do decide to ask for help, make sure you ask people good questions. Tell them exactly the part of the question you're stuck on 
and tell them what problem sheet is on, what question it is, and then it will be easier for them to give you a thoughtful and helpful response. Thanks for watching. If you have any better ideas or better tips and tricks for how to solve difficult math problems, put them in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, then please subscribe to see more like this. And if you like my t-shirt, which was made by my mum, and you'd like one, then I'll put a link in the comment section below.